What's up guys? I'm Amanda with Designs by AY and I just need to know where my all, all my unorganized peeps at because I know I'm not the only one. In this video I'm going to show you how I built a full length wall mirror jewelry case. Yeah, that's a lot of words but you'll see what I mean. Uh, I've been wanting to build this jewelry case for a really long time. I mean like I have not a ton of jewelry but enough to be disorganized with it. I mean, I was using tie racks for my, for my necklaces and six different drawers with earrings in them. I could never keep up with any of my stuff and I finally got around to building this and I'm so happy I did because now everything is in one place. Success. So if y'all are ready, let's get started. So to start off this build, I decided to take the mirror apart by taking off the back and breaking the frame apart carefully not to break the mirror. I did this so I could figure out the dimensions I would need for my lumber. Once I figured those dimensions out, I took it to the table saw and ripped down all the wood I would need into 1x3s and 1x4s. And next up after that was the miter saw. I have this really cool stop track on my miter saw station that makes it really easy to cut down multiple pieces of wood to the same length. Do not fear though, if you don't have one, it's really easy. All you need is a scrap piece of wood and a clamp. Make sure you have your tape measure flush up against your blade. Figure out where your length needs to be, clamp that sucker down, and you're good to go. You can cut as many pieces of wood as you need to, just using those two things. Now when I'm cutting down wood, I always cut off the ends. Even if I buy them from a hardware store I, and they look square, I always cut them off because you're never really sure if they are. I've learned the hard way that even if it looks square, doesn't mean it is. So cut off them ends. And once I had all my wood cut down to size, I took it to the Craig jig and drilled all them pocket holes like to clamp mine down to get everything flush and perfect so that there are no ridges, I guess is what you would call it, between the pieces of wood. Just clamp it, glue it, screw it. Bam, bam, bam! My frame for my mirror is together. Once I got that all done, I routed it out. I did this in three passes, only taking off an eighth of an inch each. The last pass though, I had to lift it up off the table using scrap wood so that my router bit would go that deep. It worked beautifully. Um, I ended up doing it this deep so that there would be enough room for the mirror and the quarter inch backer board that I was using for this project. I also wanted a little bit of wiggle room for the flex points that I was going to use. And if y'all don't know what flex points are, they're those tabs on the back of picture frames that you can bend to take out the glass and put stuff in. And I did it this way so that if I ever break the mirror, it'll be really easy to replace. I have this neat attachment for the Craig jig that I use to drill plugs to plug my holes. Then you take it to the miter saw, cut it down, and they pop right out like butter. Once you do that, Throw, I throw some glue in, pop in those plugs, wait for them to dry, and then sand them down. While I was waiting for the glue to dry, I pulled out my sides for the inside of the jewelry box and figured out my measurements of where I wanted to put my dowels for the earring holder. And I have this felt box that'll hold my stud earrings and I had to figure out where exactly I wanted that inside the box. pieces that I'm going to use for my necklaces. I measured everything an inch apart so that I can maximize the number of necklaces that I could put on this bad boy. Or I guess I should say hooks because that's what's going on there. Once I was done with all that, I took it to the drill press, not this guy, and drilled all of my holes for my dowels. I set up a stop for my jewelry hooks so that everything would be consistently drilled. It was super easy to do. I did it with like two spring clamps and a scrap piece of wood. I wanted the holes to be in the middle, so that's how I set this up. 
and it made it super easy to drill 52 holes. And after that, I glued and screwed my top and bottom pieces, then glued and put my dowels into place. Putting on the other piece though was a little bit difficult because those dowels did not want to do it easy. But I got it done and it fit perfectly. Dry fit this first just to make sure, but once I did that, it was off to the races. Next, you want to put your back piece on. I meant to do this while I was doing the top and bottom, but completely forgot. You do need this piece because, uh, yeah, you, you use it to screw it to the wall. And let's not forget that one thing every woodworker loves to do, and that's sanding, folks. And sanding, and sanding, and sanding. Oh, wait! And more sanding! Yes! And once I was done sanding, it was time for me to figure out where this felt box was gonna go. I kind of had it marked, but I wanted to make sure it looked right. So I put the back on loosely. I did not nail it down. So I like to remove it to stain. But uh, I marked my places where I wanted everything to go so that when I moved it, I knew exactly where to put it back. Then all it was was a little bit of glue and a little bit of nails to tack it into place. And I used a speed square to make sure everything was perfectly square. That guy is my best friend when it comes to stuff like that. I wanted this to be snug, so having it square was crucial. Oh, ho, 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 yeah. Like a glove. To hide the plywood seams, I decided to trim it out with some scrap quarter inch thick stock that I had on hand. So I measured everything out and cut everything down to size. Once I had it cut, it was time for a little bit of glue. I did a combo of wood glue and this fast drying glue by DAP. I love it. All I had to do was hold it down for a few seconds to make sure it adhered and it was done. I did end up lifting it up, taking that box out and clamping everything down just to make sure, but that fast drying glue was awesome. And once the glue had set, I removed the clamps and it was time to get everything stained. I let the stain cure overnight, polyurethaned it, and once that was all done, it was time to add these one gazillion hooks. Um, if anybody knows a quick and easy way to do this that doesn't damage the metal, please let me know. I tried wrapping pliers in some cloth, wrapping pliers with some foam. I mean, they worked okay, but they weren't great. So please drop me a comment and let me know if you know a better way. And the last steps were adding these finishing touches. I love these inset hinges, putting the mirror in place, adding the back, and then getting everything ready for, for the jewelry. Oh man, isn't it gorgeous? Mm -hmm. 